Hello, it is Aki Chichiroji here coming to you with an SL uh, from Organica region. Um, and I just figured I'd um, put together a quick tutorial or walkthrough video for what my workflow is in terms of reducing the uh, complexity of simple objects. Um, so what I'm working on here is a, a bunch of nystertiums and I'll show you what they look like in world. They look like that, but unoptimized, they come out to something like 41 Li, which is a little ridiculous. So um, what I figured I'd do is I'd show you what the process is for reducing them down to one. Okay, so let's let's begin. This is our uh, this is our material in Blender, and if we have a look at this. Uh, I'm using Avastar's mesh info, uh, even though I'm not rigging this. Um, it just uh, puts together an estimate of what SL requires um, for, or what SL will generate um, as as geometry when you when you import this. So, under this particular setting, okay. Um, ideally, what you want to do is you want to be below these numbers. Our top. Uh, LOD right now is 1827 and um, we want to get that down to, to something reasonable so let's make some copies what I usually do when I make LOD uh, reductions is I just put them on separate layers so I'm going to duplicate this okay okay here we go so here's our <clears throat> our top level model and we're going to start reduction. If you take a look at um, our geometry here, there are a fair number of areas where we can reduce geometry. Um, and the easiest way to do that is to take a look at our, um, our UV layout, which I had done previously, clearly, since you see textures. Um, and we're going to select our um, we're going to select pieces of our geometry by selecting them in our UV layout. So for that, what we need to do is we need to have this little button selected. Keep UV and edit mode mesh selection in sync. So that needs to be gray, not like this. Otherwise, if you select everything, you're going to see your UV layer here, but you can't actually, like you can select parts of it, but it's not going to select um, your geometry, right? So let's keep this selected. Typically, when I get get started with this, what I like to do is to separate out um, the material face that I'm working on. Otherwise, I, uh, like I don't want to affect any of the uh, other geometry in our object, right? So let's just select all of our stems, and we separate it. We're going to go and edit that uh, separately. So I like to select an edge like that and another edge like that. Now what you want to avoid is selecting edges like this because what it'll do is that it's going to select the edge in between, right? So what I like to do is I'll just select this edge here and then I want this edge ring but I don't want to select this. So I just go, I, I stagger my selection to the next one over and that'll do the job, okay? So we'll do the same thing on this side. And then we're going to merge collapse. And that does the job. Okay. Um, and for now, we're probably going to come back to this later because it needs a little bit more reduction. But let's see what else we can reduce. Okay, so we've linked those stems back in, and if we take a look at our tri count, it's at 15, uh, 1.5k, um, which is nowhere near where it needs to be. So let's have a closer look at the next mm, more complex uh, object or material face. So let's let's select that um, and separate it out. So I'm calling these flower cases, I'm sure they have another name, but that's all that comes to mind at this point. 
Um, but what I'm doing is I'm going to um, I'm going to first off I'm going to select everything and remove doubles because they're actually double sided. Uh, I double sided this because you want to be able to see them from the other side. Um, but uh, in this particular case, at a distance, you're not going to see them. But if you have a look at um, the solid view while these are selected, you can kind of see that Blender selected everything that was facing outward and deleted it. And um, if you're not seeing this when you're working on this on your on your own, just make sure that you have back face calling selected. So what that means is that it will automatically remove the back face of your geometry from rendering, mainly because SL does not give us um, double-sided geometry, unfortunately. So, uh, so in this particular case. All we have to do is we just flip our normals because both sides were using the same uh, space on the UV. And so I've already halved our, our try count here, uh, but let's, let's keep going. So I'm selecting our edge loop here. We're doing an edge ring selection and we're gonna collapse a little bit more. And again, now the next thing that I'm going to do here, and I'm 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 hoping that there is a fix for this in Blender, but um, I've never really found edge sliding to be all that reliable. But it has its it has its uses, I suppose. I just don't like it because what happens is that when you edge slide and you have multiple pieces. Um, quite often Blender will fail to calculate it properly. So here's what may happen. If we go edge slide and do that, what it'll do is it'll break our UV, even though correct UVs is selected. So I don't like that, but I mean, it's, it's just, it's not an ideal situation. I don't really like the fact that it does that. I often have to go back and fix things. So in this case, let's, let's, see what we can do. Um, I'm using this magnet tool so it's going to snap and we're going to just um, snap it to the nearest vertex. I've selected these ones here and I've uh, I want to select just, just verts here. We selected these verts and we're going to move them. But understandably you would not want to be doing this for a very complex object. So if there's someone out there who knows the solution to this, point it out to me and hopefully I can add it to, more, to my workflow because I find this very, very frustrating and uh, it, it makes me avoid edge slides as much as possible personally. So I've moved them to correct the UV and um, what we're going to do, we're going to remove doubles. And for now, I think that's, that's a sufficient reduction for this particular material face. So let's link that back in. So let's check our, our try count here. We're going to re refresh our statistic through Avastar. And that brings us down to 965. And that's still not quite what we want, right? So like, like our, our, let's check what the goal is. 456. So let's have a closer look at some of the other geometry here. Um, I deliberately made it so that the leaves were rather simple, um, but let's see how far we can reduce that. So yeah, they are basically just planes with slight divots in them for where the stem connects, but at a distance you're not gonna you're not gonna notice that at all. So. Um, in this case, I'm going to try another edge slide and we're probably going to have to correct it as well. Actually, it's not too bad. There's still a few areas, but let's see what we can do here. Let's have a closer look. All right, it looks like it was just one area where that happened and we're going to select everything and these are double-sided um, pieces of geometry so I'm just going to remove the doubles and we're going to flip our normal so that they face back uh, upright and at a distance you're not going to see the underside so I'm not going to worry about re replacing them 
and we're just going to edge slide this uh, this edge again and see if that okay so that's not too bad I think blender tends to break the UV if it's um, pretty much anything other than a square uh, that, that, that's, that's the experience that I found and even sometimes if it is a square it still doesn't do the job right so um, basically if it's any anything other than like a, a flat surface that isn't a square that is a square uh, it, it tends to break the UV um, so hopefully they do fix that or if there is a fix I can come across it um, rather soon edge slide is useful but it's frustrating sometimes it has its, its limitations let's put it that way so I've linked it back in and let's refresh our statistics we're down to 769 that's not too bad uh, let's have a closer look at the flower okay so um, we have a number of things that we need to uh, make a little bit consistent before we do anything um, you know anything special with reduction here uh, first off yes these are double sided so I'm going to remove all the doubles here just so that I have less to work with what we need to do is to join these and for some reason blender is just not allowing me to do this in selections of more than two triangles so I'm just going to do this manually. Okay, it looks like I've got everything. They're all in squares. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to edge loop or I'm gonna edge slide these loops to make them flat. And you can see my frustration here. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna select these and we're gonna move them and correct them. And we're going to remove our doubles. We're going to check and see what the heck is going on here. That should be flat. Um, this should be here. Good. Okay. We're going to remove our doubles. And we're going to edge slide this up. Okay. And I'm going to duplicate and flip our normals just because I think you'll still see the back side of the flower at this LOD. So we've got 36 tries and let's let's link that into everything else. So let's check our statistic. It's now down to 661. It looks like we probably can afford to reduce the uh, the complexity of our stems. Especially since you're not going to see them at a, at a distance, right? So let's select our stems and reduce them some more. And I think probably what we can afford to do is to uh, just reduce this whole thing. Here you can see just how severe the problem is when you have a whole bunch that need to be calculated. Um, so let's not do that. Let's just leave it as is and we'll see how complex we need to reduce it. If, if we need to reduce it we can kind of reduce geometry by some other means. So let's, let's join this back in with our main object and we're going to refresh our statistic. We're actually at 316 which is actually not bad. Let's look at what our goal was, 456. 
Okay, so I think we're okay to move on to our next step. So let's make our next LOD. And here what we're going to do is start reducing a lot of the extraneous stuff, right? So I'm going to remo remove the majority of our stems. But before I do that, I'm going to select one that's kind of as far down as possible. Just one face, okay? We're going to remove all of the other faces and we're going to remove the triangle here. Because what I'm doing is, at a distance, you're never going to see those stems. You're, you're just not. Um, but what you do need to maintain is some geometry that actually touches the bottom uh, most border of your object. So if I overlay this with other uh, the other um, layers, you can see that it still touches the bottom of, of that, right? Um, and you want that because otherwise it's going to um, it's going to deform your LOD later on. So you, you just want to make sure that whatever reduction um, in complexity you do, um, it has the same dimensions as your top level object. Um, so I'm also going, what I'm also going to do is let's check our st statistic. We're down to 110 here and what we want is 114, but I think we can push it a little bit more. In particular, I think we can push the flower cases a little bit more. So let's select those and separate them out a little bit so we can see better. And I mean, this is pretty simple as it is, but I think one thing we can do is to remove um, two sides so that it's a little bit more simple per piece. So I'm going to select this edge and we're going to collapse it. And I'm going to select this edge and we're going to collapse that as well. Now, I'm not going to correct this UV because if I have a closer look at the texture here, it's actually pretty similar. It's got some, like if I, if I compare this to our top level, it's not all that different. And we just need a hint of color at this distance. So I'm not too concerned. So let's join this back in with the geometry and refresh our statistics. So we're down to 92. Can we do any better? Um, oh, I think probably what we can do is to remove some of these extraneous leaves. And this really does come down to preference. But at a distance, you're not going to see this. So let's just check what we've got here. 86. We'll probably remove uh, something like that. Also, I'm going to re to reduce our flowers. I'm just going to reduce our duplicates and just make sure they all face outward. So this one, that one. I think I've got all of them. At a distance, you're not going to worry about this too much. And ultimately, what you may even do is rely on the lowest LOD, but we'll get to that next. So we're down to 66 tries here, which is not bad. Okay, so what we're going to do next is to create our lowest LOD. And I'm not going to do too much reduction at this point. What I am going to do is to create a new material face. And it's going to be a plane. We're going to, oops, we're going to cut it into quarters and I'm going to UV map it. We're not going to be using this texture. I'm just using this as an example, but let's, let's name this 
uh, let's make this uh, lowest LOD. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this LOD and I'm going to um, assign it the same dimensions, or assign the, this plane the same dimensions as this, this low LOD, okay? So before I do that, I'm going to move this up a little bit and I'm going to uh, also merge these verts together at their last at the last selected vert just so that I can create a uh, pyramid with uh, less complex geometry so instead of having eight faces or eight triangles I actually have four okay uh, even though that maintains the UV so that's what we want And basically, I'm just resizing it roughly to match the outer boundaries of what geometry is there. Um, and then what we're going to do is to reduce the geometry of this LOD um, for each of the material faces. So in this case, uh, we're selecting all of the flower faces. I'm going to deselect one of them and delete everything else. And we're going to select that and we're going to delete one of the triangles. So there's only one triangle per uh, material face. We've already done that for the stems and we're gonna go back and do this for the leaves as well. And then the flower casings. Okay, so um, we basically just need to move these inside underneath this material face. so that it's hidden. And then basically we can go ahead and duplicate this to the other uh, LODs. So what I can do now is to duplicate this to the other uh, layers where my other LODs are. I'm gonna do this to our third LOD first uh, because what I'm going to do is to change this so that I only have one triangle of this face. Um, in this LOD and I'm gonna hide it. So basically what I'm doing is I'm making this material face that gets hidden at the higher LODs but then as you go far farther away everything is is hidden completely except for this one material face that basically just has a texture of what you're looking at from afar. Okay but what this depends on is uh, basically uh, us applying a texture to it later. So um, let's just let me just make sure that this is the way that I want it. Um, let's have a look at our texture. Texture facing up. We want it to face down in this case. And I'm going to duplicate this to the other LODs as well. So LOD to the middle uh, LOD, which is on layer two. Right. And we're going to move this also to layer one. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to link them all up. Okay. So in all, you have five material faces. And we just go ahead and upload all of these to SL and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so we're going to uh, upload our files. We're gonna upload our models, go go Nerstertium. We're going to fill in each one of these LODs. And uh, importantly, what we're going to do is, is to choose our lowest LOD. We're going to analyze it 
and then simplify it as much as possible because we don't need a complex geometry for our physics model. In fact, later on you may even just want to set this to, fit, uh, to phantom. We're just going to simplify it so our hull is one hull total and then we're going to calculate our weights and fee, uh, which comes to 11 cents, or not, 11 lindens, and our, uh, our land impact is 0.637, which is great. So what we do, we just res that out, and then we can apply our textures to it. Okay, so this is what it looks like in World. I have applied uh, my main textures through local um, through local uh, upload or lo local texture upload uh, in the viewer. Um, mainly just to uh, the main four textured uh, material faces. But if I zoom out far enough, you'll see that last LOD face that just suddenly shows up. And that's because that's what we wanted, right? Um, but if it's if if we zoom in close, we can see that this is what it looks like if we're zoomed in close. So basically, what I want to do at this point is I usually will create a box. I will blank out the texture, and I will also make it a. In this case, it won't be a green screen. Or I guess I could, but I just want to make sure that everything is selected properly. So let's let's have a look. Let's see if we can do a green screen. If not, then we'll do blue. But what this needs to be, it needs to be full bright. Um, and yeah, let's try green. We'll see. Actually, it's probably better off if we use blue. So um, I will choose this guy here. OK. And I typically just try to get as square on an image as I can. So we'll take a screen cap. And what we want to make sure um, that we check is anti-aliasing. We want to make sure that it's disabled and then we click OK and then we take our screen cap. And I'm using Gyazo here so I'm just gonna snap that and we'll open it up in Photoshop. Okay, so this is not entirely square but uh, we're not going to worry about it too much just yet. What we are going to do is we're going to select um, all the blue and we're going to remove it. And then we're going to size this down. Let's say to about uh, 256. That should be just fine. Okay. And we're also going to give it a nice dark green background but on a different layer. Um, and I'm also going to make this square. So we're going to go to canvas size and we're going to change the height to 271. I just want to say on the fly here editing the video that um, this should be, uh, I should have edited the larger value to 256. Um, it doesn't make a big difference. In the long run, since uploading it to SL, it's probably going to size it down to 256, but every so often it does actually um, round up to 512, so you'll want to keep an eye on that. You just want to make sure that your file sizes are correct to 256 or 512, uh, just to prevent that rounding within SL. Oops. And uh, yeah, let's fill in the rest of that background. We're going to select our um, our main layer that we want to alpha. So basically what I've done here is I've just selected all and then I usually just bump it with a left and right button just so that it stays in the same spot and then I will go to channels 
and I select uh, this little button here to create a new alpha. Okay, and then we just go ahead and save it as a targa. So we're going to go Nasturtium LOD, let's say, and it's 256. We want our alpha channels, and then we hit save, and we want a 32 bit per pixel uh, targa option and that should give us the correct texture. So let's just up upload that. Uh, let's see here. There we go. And because we have our texture down here, let's, let's delete this box here. We're going to apply that texture to this face. So it looks a little weird right now, but if we zoom out, it should work. Let's have a look at our file here. So you would only ever really see it at an extreme distance, but it's there, right? And you can still see the flowers at a distance as well. I'll even show you the um, Render vol LOD factor. My, mine's set at the default 1.625, um, and uh, most people are set at that, or maybe around 2.0. Uh, 2 it really depends on your on your video card. But I don't recommend changing that value at all because um, you're just going to encourage people to to make crappier content. So I like to keep it like this because this includes everyone who doesn't know to change that value and it means that people don't have to compromise their viewing situation just to, to suit your, your, uh, your product, right? That's pretty much all I have to say about how to, um, how to manage your LODs while creating an object like this. Uh, I do hope to have this item out fairly soon. Uh, Patreon subscribers at a, the $10 tier will be able to uh, get their free gift as well as access all previous free gifts um, pretty soon, hopefully within the next day or so. Um, and uh, all of your monthly, um, your monthly rewards will be going out soon as well. Um, I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please click uh, like. Um, and um, do subscribe if you'd liked more of these videos. Um, I will try to put out more of these uh, as I have the time. Thanks. See you soon. Bye-bye.